friends. So November started out really stressful for me with me working really hard to win some elections and save America. Then I lost my job on like the fourth day of November and spent the rest of the time reading and preparing to move while still being stressed out. I read 14 books in November, including a bunch of comics. Let's go over all of the books I read in November. Let's start with children's literature. I only read one book that I would really classify as children's literature. Um, I read the fourth and final Magic Misfits book, The Fourth Suit by Neil Patrick Harris. I found the entire Magic Misfits series to be delightful. Uh, this last book is told from the perspective of Ridley, a talented inventor who is smart and tough, and as the group faces off with their most dangerous foe, Ridley needs her genius inventions, transformation magic, and most importantly, her close bonds with her friends to keep them all safe. These books are always filled with fun and exciting surprises and instructions to learn a few magic tricks. Maybe even enough to put on a show of your own? I'm giving The Fourth Suit by Neil Patrick Harris four stars. I read seven comics in November. It was a welcome, fun break to get all of this visual storytelling. A new favorite of mine is Cat's Cafe, a comics collection by Matt Tarpley. I picked it out from my library because it looked cute, and to be fair, it is cute. But I ended up getting a lot of really loving messages about mental health and taking care of yourself that I really needed when I read this. It's about a cat who owns a cafe, they are kind to themselves, their employee, a very anxious rabbit, and their patrons. Lots of jokes about coffee and lots of reminders that you have value, even if you're not exactly where you want to be. I have since followed this comic on Twitter and have been loving all of the new updates. I hope they get to publish another book, because this was simply delightful. I am giving Cat's Cafe a comics collection by Matt Tarpley five stars. Next let's catch up on an old favorite, Rutabaga the Adventure Chef, Feast of Fury by Eric Colossal. I read the first Rutabaga the Adventure Chef book in April of last year and totally fell in love. This is about a chef who is an adventurer. His name is Rutabaga and he cooks magical food in a sentient pet cooking pot. It is imaginative, witty, and filled with fun recipes that you can make at home as well as out in the wild when slaying magical beasts. If you like Dungeons and Dragons, all ages fun, or just want a fun recipe, then you should definitely check out this book. I am giving Rutabaga the Adventure Chef Feasts of Fury by Eric Colossal four stars. I also decided to pick up the new graphic novels that DC is putting out for the Teen Titans, so I read Teen Titans Raven by Cami Garcia and Gabrielle Piccolo. Um, I heard some good things about this book and it pretty much lived up to the hype that I saw. A car accident causes Raven Roth's foster mom to die just before she is adopted, and Raven experiences some amnesia as a result of the accident as well. Raven moves to New Orleans to live with her foster mother's family and finish high school. The take on Raven as being the daughter of a demon with supernatural abilities tied into the setting of New Orleans and surrounding her with strong female mentors and friends really fit well. This book was a whole vibe. It wasn't exactly my vibe, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. I'm giving Teen Titans Raven by Cami Garcia and Gabriel Piccolo four stars. Reading the Teen Titans book really made me think about how enthusiastically I loved comics when I was a kid, so I decided to check out what is being made for kids nowadays. I read Primer by Jennifer Murrow, Thomas Krzyzewski, and Greta Lusky. This is about a girl who moves in with her new foster parents and finds these paints. She is a natural artist and decides to play with the paints she assumes are for her, but actually they are from her mother's job where she is a scientist working for the military. The paints actually give you superpowers when they are on your skin. So she decides to play with these paints and then kind of becomes a superhero whose powers come from art. And that's really rad. I'm giving Primer by Jennifer Murrow, Thomas Krajewski, and Greta Lusky four stars. Still curious about what's out there for kids nowadays, I picked up Antihero by Kate Carius Quinn, Demetria Lunetta, and Maka Gill. This is about a superhero with super strength and some sweet gymnastic skills who accidentally switches bodies with a villain 
with super smarts. And they both go to the same middle school and are competing to win a trip to Antarctica from Way Industries. It's a really sweet story about the values of female friendship, taking the time to learn about other people's circumstances before you judge them, and Batman shows up, so that's always fun. I'm giving Antihero by Kate Carius Quinn, Dimitri Lunetta, and Maka Gill four stars. These last two comics, though, are definitely not for kids. Uh, Camp Spirit by Axel Lenore and Michael Fallardu is a story about a summer camp counselor in the 90s, featuring great music, rambunctious kids, supernatural camp lore that turns out to be true, and a sapphic relationship. Our heroine doesn't know anything about sports or nature or children, it seems, but slowly acclimates to camp. I, I can't say for sure if this was an accurate description of the mid-90s as I was just a baby when that was happening, but it was a good time that made me nostalgic for being at summer camp as a kid and annoying the adults responsible for me by being myself and nostalgic for being a camp counselor where the kids annoyed me and endeared themselves to me by being themselves. The story jumped around a bit, but it was still pretty solid. I'm giving Camp Spirit by Axel Lenore and Michael Fallad Drew three stars. Finally, the last comic I read was Hench Roll by Kristen Goodsnuck. Now, in the world of superpowers, there are a lot of bad jobs. Delivery driver, basically anything in food service, retail, and of course being a hench girl for a supervillain. It doesn't pay well. Uh, Mary Posa doesn't like being a hench girl, but it's sort of hard to get another gig after you do this one, and it doesn't really help that her parents, the most famous superheroes in the area, don't really acknowledge that they have more than one daughter. This is a great comic for adults who love the superhero genre and want to examine it further for the sake of comedy, and to really examine the pain that goes unexamined in a lot of superhero tropes. This book is a little weird, but definitely interesting. I'm giving Hench Girl by Kristen Goodsnuck three stars. Moving on to our next genre, young adult fiction. For new people, I read a lot of this, but I didn't really do that this month. I only read two books that I consider to be young adult fiction, genres are made up, this one more than most, so I can decide what belongs here. Okay, first let's start with Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I've talked a lot about this book because I genuinely love it. This is about Yadriel, a young trans boy from a family of brujexes, but because his family doesn't see him as a brujo due to his transness, they refuse to perform his quince ceremony where he would gain his full powers. As a brujo, his responsibility is to help the dead cross over to the other side, and he tries to help by summoning the spirit of his recently deceased cousin and finding out what happened to him when he died. Instead, he accidentally summons the spirit of his school's resident bad boy, Julian. The two team up to figure out how Julian died so that his spirit can be released and Yadriel can prove himself to be a true brujo. It's a beautiful story that takes place during the Dia de los Muertos season and is all about family, identity, and finding not just who you are, but who you belong with. I'm giving Cemetery Boys by Eden Thomas five stars. The second young adult fiction book I read was The Summer of Jordi Perez and the Best Burger in Los Angeles by Amy Spaulding. This is about Abby, a gay, fashion-obsessed, social media rock star who runs a plus-size fashion blog and dreams of taking the fashion world by storm. She gets an amazing summer internship at her favorite boutique, with the possibility of a paid part-time job in the fall. Internships should be paid, by the way. But um, she is also competing with a very cool photographer who is also gay, named Jordi Perez. Um, even as the two compete with each other in the boutique, they start to catch feelings for each other, and it is very cute and wholesome. Also, on the side of this, when Amy is not working at the boutique or on her blog, she is hanging out with Jax, a lacrosse boy who needs help with a project that involves trying every burger on the east side of LA. So. There is also like a cool friendship forming uh, throughout this book. I am giving The Summer of Jordi Perez and The Best Burger in Los Angeles by Amy Spaulding four stars. For our next genre, let's talk historical fiction, a genre that I genuinely do not read often, but always seem to enjoy. I read two pieces of historical fiction. I picked up The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky by Mackenzie Lee. This is a novella that takes place after The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which takes place in the 1700s in Europe. Uh, this is a sweet story about two men who love each other having sex for the first time after a long adventure 
where they have finally confessed their feelings to each other, their childhood best friends, and they now both know that they've been in love with each other this whole time. It is awkward and fumbling and loving how all of this is arranged. I did enjoy the string of body positivity that included consideration and accommodations for disability throughout the story. Um, I'm giving The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky by Mackenzie Lee four stars. Next, I read Loving vs. Virginia, a documentary novel of the landmark civil rights case by Patricia Hurry, Powell, and Chadra Strickland. For those who are unfamiliar, Loving vs. Virginia is the court case that ended up legalizing interracial marriage in the United States. Both of my parents were alive when this case was decided by the Supreme Court. As a biracial person in an interracial marriage, this court case has had a lot of personal importance in my life. This novelization of the events of the couple of their love was really touching. I think if you want to learn about Loving vs. Virginia, but don't want to read a lot of legal documents, this is probably the way to go. I'm giving Loving vs. Virginia a documentary novel of the landmark civil rights case by Patricia Hubie Powell and Chadra Strickland four stars. I'm also trying to read more classic books, so I read one. Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. This book is about four sisters growing up during the Civil War and what it was like to come of age during this time. It's a charming story about a family growing up in a kind of middle-class version of poverty while their father is at war and how they adjust to that while constantly trying to grow up to be virtuous young women. It's about navigating adolescence and sisterhood and doing your best even when things are hard. Even when you're still doing things a little bit unconventionally. I'm giving Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott four stars. Finally, nonfiction. I always try to read at least one nonfiction book every month. This month it was Being Jazz, My Life as a Transgender Teen by Jazz Jennings. This memoir felt like it could have been written by any of the teens I know, except she's got things a little bit more figured out from having to grow up in the spotlight as one of the very few out trans children on a national stage. She likes soccer, she gets into fights with her siblings, and she loves mermaids. This memoir is funny and kind and treats the reader like they are a close friend that is being confided in. I'm giving Being Jazz My Life as a Transgender Teen by Jazz Jennings four stars. Those are all 14 books I read in November, including some of the books I read for the Queer Lit Readathons. Since that was happening just at the end of November, thanks so much for watching everyone. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, or just leave me a little rainbow emoji to say hi. And if you want to see more from me, please subscribe, watch another video of mine, or support me on Patreon. And hey, I love you!